Hey, I'm JD. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a little bit of lathe work. So here's a nice old watchmaker's lathe. Um, and this has got a uh, counter shaft, it's called. These things are not easy to get a hold of, but I've gotten this counter shaft and I reconditioned it. I shined it up nicely, shined it up nicely. Um, it's leaning a bit back, but I do have, I've got enough leather here to get this thing around actually that's not the right piece this is the right piece here but still it might not be i'd love to reuse this piece of leather so so let me have a look here i'm going to do a watch check in a second too so this might work here and it might work around here but let me just straighten this up first because i think that if i want to make this thing work properly i've got to uh make sure that this part is straight which straight up and down would be nice, right? That way it's got sort of equal force. So I just measure it like that, tighten it up just a tad. Oh, that's not easily tightened, I don't think. We just get in here and rain on it a bit. That's tightened a bit there, not much though. I think I need to take a pair of pliers or something and get on top of that thing before it loosens too much. So let me just grab grab these things here because I find that these things here they, they make no grip marks when you're doing stuff like this so and I don't want to scratch anything so what I'll do is put a towel over the top of this and then oh that scared me I jumped and then tighten this up here like that and this will give me enough F equals MA to or force times distance right so let me just tighten it up like like so all right that's nice and tight there now i can loosen this up I'm trying not to scratch my watch here i find that these little old pliers are perfect for all kinds of stuff i don't know who invented them but some old watchmaker invented this um, old watchmaker so there you go so that's what these look like they've got flat jaws on them and when you turn this this little key here this butterfly uh, screw or nut actually butterfly nut it compresses this and there's a spring on the inside and and this here rod keeps the top aligned with the bottom nicely and you can put a lot of compression on that thing so it works really well. So I got myself some Mark's Work Warehouse leather. So leather laces. So all you need is some leather boot laces. And these are 183 centimeters of 72 inches. But I don't think I have the thickness on here. Maybe the thickness is on the back somewhere upside down. They're made in Canada. Look at that. I didn't know that Canada made boot laces. It's amazing. The things that we make here in Canada just always amaze me. So what I've I've started using um, boot laces for my lays because they're so darn quiet, right? I don't have to worry about the rattling of that pin. The old lays used to have a staple in the middle, and that staple would every time it would go around like this area here, it would snap and go tick 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 tick. So this is perfect, so all you do is you line this up so the smooth side is on the outside. That way when you sew it together, um, it's not twisted. So, and I just, just have to make sure that it's not twisted. So as I bring that thing around like that, um, I want the shiny on the outside. So it's pretty good there. Still shiny on the outside. Shiny on the outside, it gets to here. Shiny on the outside, I had to twist it a bit like that and then I'll just measure the distance first um, and just generally you're measuring I'm able to move the motor, motor back and forth because I've got a bolt system on here that that allows me with a wing nut to tighten that motor up if I want to so I can give it a little tiny bit of play and then tighten it up after right so I want to cut this cut this at the perfect length of course it never hooks in right let me just do this again here Let's fart around with this thing here. I'm going to take my sweater off. I'm sweating. 
So get that like that. And then you want to go like this, right? And of course this slips off. <laughs> and then you want to measure it and be generally accurate of where you want this thing to be. So I'll just say somewhere around, somewhere right here should do. That gives me, I can move this forward or backwards so I can, why waste leather, right? As they say, why waste leather? So I'll just cut it to here. So now I just have to cut this to this spot right here. I'm going to reach back, do it live, live folks, and grab a pair of cutters. Do I have a pair of cutters back here? Got everything but. Um, let me see. I thought those were cutters. They're not. Great. Cutters are way in the back. I'm going to pause the video and go get me some cutters. All right, I've got a pair of toenail clippers, but this will not, I don't think, cut it square across. But it does cut it nicely because they're high end. High end, in case you want me to do your toenails later on. I tend to repeat things twice. Twice! So now I've got my piece of leather here, and that goes around the lathe. Let me just block that camera for you, right? And this ends up like like this. Let me just move that around the motor and there you see how tight that is there? That's perfect. That's absolutely perfect. So now I've got to sew this together. So I'm going to show you the technique I use to sew it together. All right, so I want the, the loop, I want it to end like this with the clean piece of leather uh, kind of touching there, right? Like that. So in order to do that, I need to make two holes in the leather. And so I want this to be beside itself. So I want to be able to, to sew it so it's beside itself. Now before I've crimped them like that and sewn it through the end here, but I do want this to be sewn on the side. So I might want the leather to go around here on the side. Maybe it doesn't matter, right? Because it just, it's, just it's just a big giant chunk of leather. So, so I like to get the lace though to be through the thicker part of this boot lace, not the middle part. So, so if I put the boot lace beside itself like this and then crimp it like that, I usually use hand holders to crimp it together and then I use reamers to ream the holes before I sew it. So let's get it set up. All right, I'm gonna try to do this again under camera, under the duress of camera. And what I'm gonna do is put the leather in through here I usually use my hand, like I said, my hand adjusters to do this. But I'm going to try it with this tool here. So I need to crimp that in. I'll crimp it on this side here. And just tighten this until it gets close. And like that. And then line up the ends so that they're close and tight. Because it makes a difference. I'll show you after. Because when I open up the leather, I want to make sure that they're they're um, that I can open it up and feed it in nicely. So you just and I got to find a vise to hold this to grip this properly, which wasn't an issue before, but is now. So I'm checking the spacing on the bottom here to make sure I got the right spacing. That's good. Now I can just crimp that down nicely nice and tight there that's not going to move so now I need I could do it by holding it <clears throat> but when I sew it do I hold it when I sew it that's the question so I do like to have this in a vise so I'm going to go get a vise and see if I can clamp it into a vise all right I'm going to put my vise at a little bit of an angle here like that and then drop this down through the center like so and then see if I can tighten it like this. That's actually not too bad. And tighten the vise up a little bit. Tighten this a little more. There. Now I got my solid surface here. And I can actually ream these out now. So 
I've got these brooches that are Bergeron brooches that might work because I just need a small brooch to be able to do this with. So if I open this up very carefully, I can see the brooches I have in here. Um, and I think the fat ones near the end will, should do the job. So I'm going to grab one of those brooches and use that. All right, I got the right size brooch. There it is there. Like that. So now I've got to, I'm going to revise my camera angle just for you folks. Just so I don't get you mad at me. I'm trying to turn this, uh, turn this lathe around here just a bit so you guys can see what's going on. So just turn it like that and then I'll move the camera at a bit of an angle like this. It's good to have a camera that goes all over the place, right? So let me just grab that. Nothing like a gooseneck on a camera, right? So there we go. That's it there. And so what I want to do is get a nice hole right there. Now you want to pick where the hole needs to be. It should be down a bit so you can get enough of the meat of the uh, of the actual uh, leather. And when you twist this in, it should start drilling a hole for you, right? And you got to make sure the hole goes straight through the back. So keep an eye on your your angles. So it's absolutely perfect going through. And I can already see it going through on the side. There it is. See that? Dusty Pants. That's my other country and western name. So I'll just make this bigger because I want to be able to put a needle through it. Right? So just widen that out with the brooch. And see it's going to pop some leather off on the end there. And that might be good enough. It just depends on the needle size. I got a pretty pretty hefty little needle here. So you can go back and forth with the brooch with your finger. And that's going to make the hole. And so to date, I haven't lost a single I haven't lost a single uh, I haven't lost a single belt I knew I wanted to say something after that word single right so I'm just trying to get rid of the leftovers that's on the brooch and the needle should go through that nicely and then I just pick the other side here try to center it again because this little thing It'll there center it like that, and then I got fingernails, which is pretty good. But just start lightly, so start turning your hands very lightly on this, and just try to make sure that it's aligned. I got to push up at a bit of an angle because I don't want the hole to come out at the top. And there you go. So there's the hole. You can see it coming through, and I just have to. Spin this around. It doesn't really matter. I don't think if you spin it either either way as long as you're spinning it around, right? And There's not much prep work to do other than getting a nice piece of boot leather So if you can find a piece of boot leather that's better than this then by all means buy it But this for now will do and this is the biggest brooch I have now so I might want to want to have had used a bigger one but for now that that'll do so there we go so let me just see how i'm doing here just go at a little bit of an angle let it cut some more material and there it's going all the way in there so that's perfect i just stick my brooch in the pad there and i'm going to prep my needle all right so i have smooth casting four pound test fishing line so that's pretty much all you need to do this and I got a ton of it so I could make a million belts here so I keep that tape down when I'm not using it but then I'll take a bit of it off like so and I got to sew this and then cut it on the end right or tie it so I want to make sure I have enough enough but not too much so I think I think I'll cut it right here, right here, and leave it like that, and I think just move that tape down a bit, and just cut it right there, like so, put that away, and there's my needle there, and I just have to thread the needle, 
See if I can do that without magnifying glasses. There we go. Thread the needle. So there we go. That's threaded now. Um, and just make sure it's relatively even on the end. Not completely even. It's not a... You're not sewing grandma's pillows together here, okay? You're just doing a watch stuff. So there it's sewn nicely. And then just move the camera back in place here and show you what I do. So squeeze it a little bit so it knows where home is. And then I've got to find the hole. And there it is. Now when I sew this together, I'm going to sew it together relatively loose, not super tight, because if I super if I sew it super tight, I can't open this up. So learned that lesson the hard way. So I'm going to sew it together relatively loose. Now I've got to find the hole on the other side, which could be tricky, which means I might have to get my brooch back out again, because there's a little bit of leftover leather from the knobby on the other side, right? So let me find that hole. Come on, hole. Come to me. Just go through the, the leather again with that brooch, because I made the hole pretty big, so, so I just want to back this off exactly where that hole is. That's where I want to enter. There we go. That's coming out the other end. So that's one. And I probably could have made this a bit longer, actually. Make it longer and easier. Because I only need to go through this twice. Oh, Jesus. Murphy. Moses. Scared the shit out of me. Hang on. I'll be right back. All right, that was advertising, which scared the crap out of me. And if you recognize that ring, that ringtone was from the movie Our Man Flint. You can look up the movie, Our Man Flint. And that's when Flint was a secret agent. It was kind of a spoof on the uh, James Bond movies. And it was whenever the president called, that phone would ring like that. So there. So I've, just, I've got it in here, but I've got a little bit too tight. So I'm going to pull it out a bit, just a bit, because I can tighten it after. I want to go around, and I just tighten it again. Hang on. I want to go around here, back into the hole, if I can find it again. There it is. Like that. Yes. And I've, sometimes I've gone around three times, right? But really not necessary so that's that's two now I can tie it n right now because um, two should do um, so I'll do I'll just do that because if I do three then what happens right so I go tie a knot in it put a knot in it baby put a knot in it and I'm looking the way the knot I want a square knot as they call them so I'm trying to look at the way the knot is being tied right now. And it's not wanting to square off on me. All right, so it's going that way, which means the other one's got to go the other way. All right, so that's that way. And then I think, I think it goes this way, but I'm not quite sure, so I'm going to go the other way. Because I think you've got to go the opposite way to get a square knot. And then tighten it that way. I don't know if I have a square knot or not. I think I do, actually. All right. There we go. And I'll tighten that a little bit. Like that. That's my square knot. And now I snip it. Right about there. And I got to get out a match. I want to burn the end there so that it stays so that the little the knot doesn't come apart so just do that and I'll be right back with my burning device all right I got myself a big ass lighter make sure there's no lighter fluid stuff around or anything so all I want to do is <clears throat> put the flame near the end here and wait till you see it melt There we go. So that balled up, the two little ends balled up nicely. So that should do. And we will now see. So that's together. So just 
because I'm going to do another one of these, but I just wanted to show you how to do one, right? Because now it's like this, as you can see. Now the question is, do I leave enough slack to, to roll it? So if I do this, try to roll it through. And sometimes it doesn't matter too much if it doesn't roll through nicely, because over time, when the lathe rolls, this will flatten it out, because that'll make the other end come through. You can take a screwdriver maybe and poke at it to see if it'll roll through. Um, and if it doesn't again, like I said, it shouldn't matter too much. Get a big screwdriver. Big screwdriver, like that. And then you just have to push it like this. Is that working? I'm not sure. I don't want to rip the leather either, so... That should be good right there. That's not going to make any noise now because it's nice and quiet. And then I just have to put this onto the lathe. And in this case here, I'm very lucky because I can, I can adjust the loop. Let me just move that up here like that and like this. And I can just undo that, which it doesn't fall into the other side here. And put the loop through here. I can try to make it square. Not sure, I'm not too concerned if it isn't, right? And then push this back in. Now when you make the... Um, see if I got movement? Yeah. Now when you make it for the other side, for this part here, you've got to put the leather through here first and then you make it, right? Because if you if you do it the way I just did it, there's no way of getting that leather the leather around that, right? So so now I've got it like this and there you go. So when this motor spins, the wheel will spin. I know you don't believe me, so I'm going to have to test it really quick and then I got to go downstairs because I watch I got to watch a documentary with my wife with Chris Helmsworth. So I'm going to test this really quickly. I've got this plug here, which goes in here, right, uh, like that, and just make sure that this is going to go in. I'm looking at the connections and the jobby doohickey, it seems to be on the right side. So if I do it that way, it won't work, so it's like this. Yeah, so there you go. I don't need to push this too far in. And then I've got a plug here, and I know I've got power on the other side, but it's also variable power so I know I have power tucked away right here I gotta clean up this mess now after this wonderful work so this I got a foot pedal on the bottom right and that's without tightening it up so it's not really tight and that's a motor that I got off Amazon. It's just a sewing machine motor. I bought that off Amazon sewing machine motor made in China. And there you go. That's a noisy motor though. And that's it. So there's my video on how to make a belt. Just make sure when you make this belt back here you put the, the boot lace in first and then measure it out just like I did before. But you've got to turn the lathe sideways so that you have the availability of the of this here, right? So just, you, know, you want this kind of a rig to be available, some kind of a plier thing where you can hold the two pieces of leather beside each other, ream it and then sew it and you're good to go. So that's how to make it. So so that's my, my film for today. And I'm JD, hang on. Have a look at me for a second. There you go. I'm JD and welcome to my channel and thanks a lot for watching. And that's how you make a leather belt for a lathe. Highly recommended. I've never had one break yet. And you can use tons and tons of fishing line to do it. So if you screw up, just use more fishing line. See you later.